morning in the swamp. The strategy for today was to get here just before the sun came up, which I did by about 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe, but the uh, light was already infiltrating. Nautical sunrise is really about 60 minutes before the actual sunrise. So, but anyway, I did get out here before 6.51, which is when the, the deal, which would have been nine minutes ago. And, uh, it's really pretty. It's just really peaceful. Part of the reason I think people do this, if you can just get out here with them, where there's solace and definitely a repose from civilization. Nimbus cumuli. I'm headed to a swamp area. This is an area that we've called Floravonic. Sort of after Todd Standing's Sylvonic. This is the Floravonic area in the Florida swamps. It's an adjunct to the Green Swamp and it's a connector to several other watershed areas. It's a prime, prime nature and active area for the uh, for the skunk game. I thought it'd be cool if it came out here. Let's just say, I don't even want to say cooler. Probably just not as hot would be more accurate. This is what you're getting me about this swamp, folks. That's a pygmy rattler. Look at that. I proceed from this point, I have no snake boots. Boy, you talk about something that'll take you out of the game and fast. They live in Florida, they're called pygmy rattlesnakes. Wow. Man. You could that, I just spotted it. See, that's the problem with where I'm at. Because, um, this is becoming overgrown. You see all this water here. And there's cotton mouths, and I have no snake boots. I have no snake boots. And this time of year, man, I really shouldn't be out here, I guess. What I'm up against. Like, you can go around this, door number one. Well, actually, door number one is over here. Poisonous snakes, as you just saw. Door number two in the middle. An alligator hole. Could be right there in the grass. And over to door number three, more poisonous snakes, and maybe another alligator. So those are your friggin' choices for today, folks. And, uh, I'm not sure. Wow. I mean, if you don't, I read an article said that this, most snake, uh, most people get bit by a snake, never see the snake until after they're bit. This used to be a hunting area. I've come across this barrel thing here. This is 
feeding trough, I don't know. Feeding what? Might be some people who are hunters. This is a cement block that would uh, have some idea about this. God, just walked right through the spider web. That's interesting. Cross eggs crawling on me too. Get off me. But I got crazy zoom here. Cool. You can focus in and out, foreground, midground, background. Here are the birds, the wildlife is picking up. Uh, today we run into two rattlesnakes, two pygmy rattlesnakes, and those are just the ones you can see. This place is also full of diamondbacks and cottonmouths, which are extremely aggressive and extremely dangerous. And if you're bit, there's no way you'll stay calm. You're miles away from getting to your car, getting any kind of help. You're probably dead. That's right, you're probably dead. Hopefully I'll be the first person that was ever photobombed by a skunk ape. Now that would be cool. See if he'll come up from behind me. <laughs> this is a crazy endeavor, you know that, right? I mean, sane people don't do this. It's something how you'll get action, you'll get some activity, and then it stops. There's a theory why you only get two or three prints and they disappear. Some people who believe in the woo, believe that it just kind of like appears, does a little bit, and then disappears. Goes to another dimension or something. I used to not believe in any of that until that experience I had the other week. The sound was just like that. So, boom. And it's gone. And I mean gone like gone like otherworldly gone. <sighs> anyway. Let me go get my camera. Before that disappears. If that's gone, that's that's not good.